Hello class, I'm Professor Williams, Sociology 105, Social Problems, College of San Mateo. I want to talk to you about Chapter 5. The title of Chapter 5 is Rape and Murder, two very horrible things. We talk about violence in our society and they deliberately choose for this chapter the worst kind of violence that we can imagine and that is rape and murder and Believe you me, no one is going to question that as a value or non-value in our society, something that we do not want to happen. You might, however, want to puzzle a little bit about why they put, included rape in that. Did some of you think maybe rape was more um, an act of sex as opposed to an act of violence? If you did, you'd be wrong. Yep. Rape is violence, and, and violence, I think, in one of its most horrible forms, the worst only other one being that they take your life away from you permanently, right? Okay, so now there's a lot for you to talk about here, and don't forget when you are reading this chapter to put some emphasis on the various perspectives, sociological perspectives that will come with it, like the interactionist perspective or the conflict, not not or, but and, the conflict perspective, the functionalist perspective. Don't forget to think about those. But what I want to talk to you most about in this video is the rape part. That's because I think you can get to the murder pretty easily and you will understand it without a whole lot of interpretation. But let's talk about rape. The reason I say that is you might think to yourself, well, rape is rape. It's not quite that easy. And that is because rape most often, most often, rape occurs from male to female. And females in our society are less powerful. And therefore, the whole idea of rape and what is rape and when it occurs and how we punish it when it happens is twisted a bit based on that whole power structure of who gets power in the society, who doesn't, who has more of it, and who doesn't. When, we, when we're judging rape, let's say somebody gets raped and they enter the legal system, most often it is up to the victim, most often the female, to prove actually that a rape occurred. Now, in most other crimes, it is innocent until proven guilty, right? In this one, the person who was, uh, who was acted upon has to prove that the rape occurred. And while they're doing that, the system, our legal system, spends a lot of time judging the victim. It's like, what did you do to occur it? Here's, here's a very frequent question. What were you wearing? Yeah, as though what somebody had on their body would somehow change the responsibility of the person who raped them and, and absolve them of their actions. Isn't that weird? They'll say, what were you wearing? Or they'll say, why were you in that alley late at night? Well, that's an odd question when you're talking about justice and violence and rape because in the United States, everybody, no matter what your gender is, Everybody is allowed to be anywhere they want at any time they want. So why should it matter that a person was in a dark place or was wearing a strange thing or wearing something that you don't think is appropriate, even though in another time or in another society or even in another state, they might think is quite appropriate. Isn't this interesting? Something else to consider while you're thinking about rape. Our society, some sociologists say, is a rape uh, pro-society. What they mean by that is that we say we hate rape and we put want to prosecute rapists and we think that people who do rape are the most horrible people in the world, but we don't really mean it. And they say we, that that's the case because we are so casual about it that we, and I'm talking male, female, people who live in a house and we raise our children and they grow up to become women and men, 
that when we raise our women, we talk to them so much about how to avoid rape and what not to do and watch your drink and never be alone with a man um, by yourself, even for somebody you know, because if you've been drinking, it still could turn into rape. And all these lists, and any of you women out there who are listening to me, you've heard it because your parents have told you and you've told your younger sisters or younger people that you've run into, and they all know all these things. Be careful they don't give you a dropout. A knockout drug, you know, because then you won't know that it happened until later, etc., etc. Long list, long list. Okay. Now, what's the list that we give to men about not raping? Hmm. You can't think of any, can you? Now, these are the same mothers who are raising these men. So, if you're a mother yourself, I'm going to say we need to do a better job in raising men who don't rape. If you are a man, Think about this. Men do not have the right to women's bodies. But in our society, we act as though they do. We do. We think that rape is just kind of casual when that happens, and it happens a lot in certain places. We are not so quick to take action. I'm going to back up a little bit. I just said that rape action happens a lot in um, certain places. Do you want me to name one of those places? Here it is. College campuses, one of the highest incidences of rape. Some of the statistics say one out of three woo, college women end up being raped or sexually assaulted, euphemism for rape, by the way, uh, are sexually assaulted on a college campus. I'll go a little further on that one. It's not just that the incidence of rape are so high, it happens specifically to freshmen and sophomores. I'll go further than that. It happens more often to people who are related to sororities and fraternities. How about that? Yes, those who have so many good things going for them still think that rape is a casual thing. I think that as you study this and as you go on and study other um college courses and then going out to society and do the things you want to do with your life. I am hoping that you learn enough from this chapter to know that we need to change this. We need to, and we can. We need to do better about our men and raising them, our young boys, about their entitlement to women's bodies. We need to do better about our whole attitude. Now, I told you that our justice system does not take rape as seriously as it should. Most often, light sentences, if in fact they even get to court, most often than not though, the people making these sentences, these people who are making these judgments, who are punishing, they're all men, predominantly. The ones in power are men. So they kind of want to be a little nicer to other people who just happen to end up in this bad situation where somebody said that they raped them. We need to change that attitude. We need to know that if a woman is not capable of responding and you take advantage, that's rape. If a woman is drunk, that's rape. If they say, oh, the man was drunk too, obviously not as drunk or they wouldn't have had the facility to take care of that, right? Or to, um, to do that. Oh, 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 you're going to hear men say, women lie. Do they? And if they do, I wonder how often. And if they do, gee, men, maybe you shouldn't put yourself in a situation where a lie would be effective enough. Because most of the time, it is extremely hard to prove that the woman lied. Yeah. And I know that men are raped as well. I do. I do know that women can be sexual predators. But the reason I chose to take the point that I did is because most often, vastly most often, it's men to women. It's men to women. So I am, what can I say, pleased that some of you selected this for your midterm topic and cannot wait to see how you deal with it and cannot wait to see how you address types of rapism, social patterns for rape. Are there some states, hmm, that rape more often? And if they are, if there are, of course I know the answer, but I'm not going to say because I want you to read it. But if there are, isn't that a way of saying that in those states, 
This casual attitude about how men feel about women's bodies is even more so and more pronounced. Now, before I say I leave here, I want to say one more thing about this whole rape business, and that's this. Often in our society, very, very often, all day, every day, men judge women about their looks. They do, and they judge women about their looks first and then consider their capabilities. And I think that this is a casual way of leaning toward that whole business about them having access to women's bodies. They also have the right to judge what is considered a beautiful body or an acceptable body and what is not. I would like to encourage all the males in our class to stop doing this. If you want to compliment a woman, compliment her about her achievements first. If you just have to compliment her about her looks, how about doing that second? But what about saying you're intelligent, you're determined? What about that? You're bright, you're accomplished, you've done so many wonderful things. When you're watching television and you see these talk shows and women come on the talk shows and they say, now I'm going to introduce to you, you know, and so and so, so and so. The first thing that the um, person on the show will say, the host, he'll say, the beautiful and talented blah, 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 blah. Men come on the show never mention their appearance. They mention what they've done. You've directed, you've sung, you've won this award, you've done this. I think that is a belittlement on women is that their main function in our society is to please the eye of the males. Everything else comes second. So I'd like to encourage the men to switch that, change it, the men in our class. And to the women, maybe point it out and say, you know what? Thank you because we all want to look good to other people. But you know, I would have preferred it actually if you had put the fact that I have finished my college degree first, or if you had put first the idea that I have accomplished many things or I have overcome obstacles, those kinds of things. Give it some thought, okay? All right, that's chapter five, violence in society. Um, keep your eyes and your ears open as you go through this and do it with a perspective that lets everybody know that you know what's truly going on here. I'll talk to you again next.